緊張が高まるポーランドのベラルーシの国境現場の森ではシリアやイラクなど世界中から来た小さな子供を含む数千人規模の移民難民が石場を失っています最低気温はすでに氷点下数週間にわたる野宿で食べ物も水もつきスマホから助けを求める GPS 情報が連日発信されていますただ救助のプロである国内外の医療団体や支援団体は現場に入れませんポーランド政府が国境3キロ圏内の立ち入りを禁じているためです救助に迎えるのは地元住民だけある日突然人命救助を担うことになったシングルマザーの女性の姿を通じて支援現場の状況をお伝えしますえー、こんにちはジャーナリストの村山祐介です、えー、私は今ポーランド東部の、えー、ビアリストクというところにいます、えー、今あの息は白いと思うんですけれども4度で、えー、この後2度まで下がるというふうに予測されています、えー、おととい、えー、シリア人の若い男性が遺体で見つかりました、えー、ベラルーシ周辺で見つかった、えー、遺体はこれで11人目というふうに見られています、えー、こうした事態を前に、えー、地元住民や支援グループが、えー、グルーパグラニータ、えー、国境グループという連携組織を作ってましてえー、SOS に応じて水とか温かい飲み物とか防寒具を届けるという活動をしています、えー、ただその救助が未明とか、えー、夜中とかもうたくさんありまして、えー、相当疲労が皆さん溜まってまして、えー、あと、あのー、スマホで送られてくるそのメッセージを無視できない助けなければ死んでしまうというようなこう切迫感もあってですねだいぶ精神的にも疲れている様子です、えー、私が今回の取材を始めたのもそうしたこうこう地元住民の悲鳴にも近いメッセージを受け取ったのがきっかけでしたポーランドの地元の住民の方からちょっと気になるメッセージが届きまして、えー、Facebook のメッセンジャーでやり取りをしているんですけれども、えー、この地で起きていることはだんだんとジェノサイド大虐殺になりつつある、えー、起きていることは世界に先張らなければならないという非常に切羽詰まった感じがありましてもともと3日後に取材に出ようと思ってたんですが、えー、もう明日の朝一番の飛行機で現地入りしようと思います。警察ですね、えー、私も止められるようですどうもパノハローあいやあ、excuse me yeah, where you go? じゃあ、そう、I'm going to stay in ハイヌフカ OK じゃあ、go there and we talk about this, OK? OK, 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 OK ついて、スマホを見てみたところこんなようなメッセージが SMS で届いていましたポーランド国境は閉鎖されているベラルーシ当局あなたに嘘をついているミンスクへ帰れというメッセージでリンクをクリックするとポーランドの内務省の移民に向けのメッセージにつながっていますベラルーシとの国境から2 0キロのハイヌフカは人口2万人ほどの静かな町です私にメッセージをくれた英語教師のカッシャ・ワッサは2人の娘を育てるシングルマザーですが穏やかな暮らしは8月から一変したと言います And they are, if they want to、um, move backwards, they are beaten. And they are told to go, go to Poland. This is the only way, just go to Poland. And once they cross the border with Poland,、um, there is an army, really literal, literally, an army of policemen,、uh, border guards, and soldiers, sometimes with dogs,、uh, that try to find them in the forest. And then to do what? To push them back to the border again. So a human ping pong begins. Human ping pong? Yes. And、um, yesterday, for example, I met one man in the forest just on, at the outskirts of Hainuka that told me that he spent a month and a half. A month? And a half, and a half. being pushed back and forth and spending part of his time in this、uh, belt of no man's land. Between the two borders. Saturday, for example, five men from Syria were found in the forest just next、uh, to Hainuvka,、mm -hmm. and、uh, all of them、uh, in hypothermia, one of them almost dying. And when I arrived, he was in the ambulance. 
he's already dying. You know, here he's next, just one step here, one stir, step dead. He could not sit, he could not walk, he could, he was on the verge of dying. They gave him some help in the ambulance and then he was, was pushed back to the border. How to call this? How to call such behavior, you know? If children are taken with their families and pushed back to the border, little children, and the people, you know, when you see, when you meet a person, and the person is like a ghost, and uh, you just face the person, and the person tells you nothing, just falls into your arms, and not even cries, it's like a roar, it's like a like a holding, you know? A person holding in your arms and telling, my baby, my baby, and you don't know why this woman is telling you my baby. And then it turns out that she stumbled in the forest when they were walking and walking and pushed back and uh, that she, lost, she was pregnant but lost her child and she was bleeding for days in the forest with no doctor, no help from anybody. And her husband standing next to her and holding just like her and falling into your arms and crying and crying and crying. And his, his feet are wet because he fell into the swamp and he's wrapped with a plastic bag over his clothes so just to keep himself a little bit warmer. And they have no place to go. And our country has nothing to offer to them. And they have just the side of the road and us and nobody else, and no place to go, and no place to hide. And they have just one dream. And their dream is, take me to a place which is warm. What a dream is it to a human being, you know? We have our plans, we have our ideas, we have our ambitions. And what in what condition must a human being be to have ambition of being warm, you know? And completely nothing else, just warm. And each one of us volunteers has been in many, many, many situations like this within just last few weeks, you know? And we see that more and more people are coming and the conditions in the forest are getting worse and that we cannot cope with this situation because we do not have enough time, we do not have enough power, we do not, we do not have enough hands to help everybody and legs to run everywhere, you know? And no humanitarian help on a bigger scale is present in the region because our country does not want to help. And we are overwhelmed. Because how long can we live like that? And is it really our role, me, as a mother of two children, as a teacher, as a translator, to do this, to spend my nights in the forest? Am I really for this, you know? And all of us ask each other such questions and ourselves, we ask such questions, you know? How long can we go on like this? And we have no good answer, because we don't know. And. Uh, our, our government just silences the, the problem. They just push more and more army here. But what for? I don't know. This is what's scary, you know? And this is so difficult to live here because I, I do not... I can go away for the weekend, but this place was my choice. And uh, this, it, it becomes unbearable to live in this place. Hmm? I don't know, it's really, really hard. Really, really hard. I don't know what it's going to lead to. No idea. So that's why, for example, I'm going away for the weekend just to take care of myself because I know that when I'm here and I get a call for help, I will go, but I need to sleep more, I need to eat more, I need to take a break. But it's not possible to take a total break because once you've seen what you've seen, uh, you cannot distance yourself totally from it.
because you already know what kind of suffering is hidden behind these situations. And that this is not statistics, this is not a global problem, but these are faces and names and their stories behind it. And this is very hard. Hmm?え、今夜の11時です。え、2時間ほどインタビューを終えて、え、今車に戻ってきたところです。ちょっと彼女の話は本当に信じられない現実で、え、私が大変ギャップで見た世界にすごく似ている要素があるなと、え、感じました。え
criminals, vandals, on the Belarusian side in the forest, and they also took things from him. Mm -hmm, tak. Ja muszę mówić czuć głośniej. Mm -hmm. Belarusian soldiers that hit him so hard on the head. That Polish soldiers, they come to you at night, they wake you up, and they push you to the Belarusian side of the border. And that uh, it happened to him three times. That, that he hasn't eaten for six days, he hasn't drunk water for six days. That the people that appear for the first time at the border and uh, they still have some food, they share with you, they give you a little, a little, but still they do. And the people that are pushed back, they don't uh, want to share their food with you because they know that there will be more pushbacks. And uh, he also said that there are children at the border that are starving. He's seen so many people on the move, like flowing like a river, and that so many people suffer. I tak dużo ludzi też umiera, tak? In they are in such a poor condition, like uh, on the edge of life and death. Why did you choose to take this route to go to Aha. Poland rather than applying? Uh, Jeszcze powiedz, że mamy to jedno pytanie, tylko dlaczego? And to get a visa to Schengen, you have to have a full-time job. And he got to know that Russia gives visas very, very easily. A man from Afghanistan told him that, okay, if you want to see them, the easiest way now is to choose this eastern route. Eastern route? This eastern, yeah, this way from Russia to Belarus, mm. and then to Poland. Ah. Every day more migrants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today 400, tomorrow 200, and the next day 150. I come from Moscow. Belarus. Minsk. Taxi. A frontera. Mm. Frontera. Mm -hmm. Andando. Caminando. Caminando. Aquí. Uh -huh. Policía Polska. Uh -huh. Otra vez aquí. Ah, otra vez aquí. Oh. Policía. Uh -huh. Belarus. Uh -huh. Otra vez aquí. Uh -huh. Policía Polska. Otra vez aquí. Uh -huh. Policía otra vez aquí. Uh -huh. Luego otra vez quiero salir, quiero volver yo. ¿Mm? Yo quiero volver a Moscú. Ah, usted, ah, quiero volver a Moscú. Moscú, sí. Ah, ¿por qué Moscú? Quiero coger el avión, volver a mi país. Ah, tú en Morocco. Y no me dejen. Ah. Oh. No. No. Belarus, yo no. Vete a Polonia. Belarus para volver cada persona 100 euros. And the soldiers have to pay return each person. No euro to Poland. Ah, go Poland. Uh -huh. If you don't pay euro. Uh -huh. Ah. Mafia no yoda to your message or character. Mm -hmm. Moment, you can help me, Mr. Panu, to get to the door. Uh huh. And I will help you. I will. I have never been prepared for this and I have never aspired mm -hmm. to solving such problems. Mm -hmm. And the same say all my friends, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Because we have a strong feeling that there are humanitarian aid missions organizations that should be providing the help. I'm not an actress taking part in adventure mm. films. I'm an ordinary person. I'm extremely, an extremely ordinary person. Mm. But I would mm -hmm. take a break, mental break, you know, from this situation. Right, 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 right. And because I've been constantly in these for four weeks now, mm. with no break at all, sl not sleeping much, not eating much, and you know, being often stressed, 
I I wanted to take care of myself a little bit as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But maybe some other weekend. <laughs> <laughs> この1週間後の11月上旬赤十字などが立ち入り禁止区域の外に水や食料などの支援物資を集めたセンターをオープンしましたただ赤十字ですらもこうした物資を持って禁止区域の中で活動することは認められていません この1週間後の11月中旬、ボランティアが集まって作るグループアグラニータが立ち入り禁止区域のすぐ外の森で記者会見を開きました。We are grassroots activists. We are not professionals from the humanitarian organizations that should be here delivering aid, delivering humanitarian assistance, del- delivering medical and legal assistance to the people trapped in the woods. We have been responding to, we have been responding to the situation to save lives in the context where the government restrict access.このベラルーシ国境の移民難民問題、全体像や経緯などは1回目に公開した動画にまとめてますので、そちらのも合わせてご覧になっていただければと思います。チャンネル登録やいいね、ご意見、ご感想をお待ちしています。また現場行ってきます。